actually on my floor. Turn it. Actually, no, because she bought my robe. Then fuck, I'm all dressed. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> is that is that what you normally wear? A robe? Yeah, no, <laughs> not here and there. <laughs> Man, you know, honestly, one thing I, are, like, it's the one thing I love about hotels that like you go to a nice hotel and they got a robe yeah. in there. I'm like, I put it on right when I get out of the shower. Yeah, that's the best. Never one. wear a robe. You never wear no? a robe. No, I don't know why. Have never. you tried a robe on? Or? <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, I, 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 coffee, up, dude. I know. I just never put them. Everything's I, I, free. I go. I'll, <laughs> I'm more like I'll go like naked. Like I like I sleep oh, okay, full. Yeah, I go like everything always. Yeah. No, I don't sleep in a robe. I walk no, around but I mean, in, it. in the daytime. Yeah, I'll okay, just throw, yeah, like yeah. I'll pull like baggy shorts on. And that's oh, okay, okay. I'm yeah, just like lazy. I have nowhere to put the robe. Like yeah, that's. Funny. I don't know why. Well, now My you gotta wear a robe in Las Vegas and walk around the casino that way. Have you done that before? I've seen someone do it. Oh, it's, yeah. on, it's on the bucket list. Know, that'd be cool. It's on the bucket list. Hey, we're going to see him like in a month from now just walking around the Vegas. I was place. actually considering going to Vegas in like two weeks, but change of plans. Yeah. It's my, one of my favorite places. Uh, really, eh? Have you been? Dude. So I used to go to trade shows for a caller. Yeah. And uh, I would have to go twice a year for like eight years. So I know everything about Vegas. Twice a year so for eight 16 years. 16 times. Yeah. Not bad. Oh, shit. Yeah. I got, I, and it's a work when I first started, too, I was eh? super excited. And then yeah. I fucking I was like, oh shit, it's too much. By the end, it's over. See, yeah, I, 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 it gets boring after, but yeah, in the beginning, it's fun. See, I I, I've Vegas been. Man, we haven't been there sixteen times, so. Yeah. I think I've been. I think I started today. I've been five or six times. I've been. I've been a, yeah. maybe like, like I've gone for trade. I've done work. I've done my birthdays. I've done in Vegas. Boy trips. Yeah, I've done everything. Like oh, I've okay, done. Sick. There's co I've conferences. My yeah, yeah. um, I work in the commercial cleaning. I mean, mm -hmm. pre startup days, but commercial nice. cleaning. I nice balloon decorators. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Come on. Okay, your story. And then we're gonna make a note of balloon decorator. Uh, no, I was just gonna say like I had gone down because there's big trade shows. Everything, construction, yeah, everything's yeah. down there. Okay, yeah. And going down for work's kind of fun because like you don't. I, at least I didn't get like caught up in like going out to the clubs on like a. Yeah, yeah. Conference during the week. But then the last couple of times I went for work, I ended up like seeing like events coming up on the weekend. I'm supposed to fly out Friday. I was yeah, like, yeah. I'll stay a couple more days. It's the worst that can happen. <laughs> and then the worst happens, you know, when you're down there. But it's fun. I, I personally love it. Um, yeah. I haven't been in a little while, but I really like Vegas. Yeah. I just like it because it has everything. The service is exceptional. Yeah. In most they're, they're, the people that live there are super nice. That's yeah. the weird. That's the craziest thing I found. Yeah. Like the cab drivers were like super nice about everything. You just feel like people when they're there, they're just there to have fun and like it's like good energy, good vibes. Yeah, yeah everyone's kind of like they just want to party. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> and it's like all and all the resort staff know that the city runs off these people that come here to want to party. So they're super, so they're nice super extra, yeah, yeah, yeah. super happy. Like, well, there's like, a lot of people. It's one of the, I think Danielle might have to check this, but it's I think the fa one of the, f um, one of the fastest growing like metropolitan areas in, in the United States. Is it? Really? Uh, yeah. yeah. Because uh, they are in like Florida. I think it's sorry, not fastest growing, but in terms of like people like relocating, oh, okay, a lot yeah. of people are moving to Vegas, a lot into Florida. I think yeah. Danielle, maybe check that. Cause I could be wrong, but I think <laughs> Vegas, I think a lot of people are moving to Vegas. Nevada. Really? I, can see it. I think low taxes, good job gratuities. Like Tesla, I think, is building a factory there. Houses are cheap there, too. You can get a huge actually, house. I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Compared I knew to Toronto, that. at least. Yeah. Do, you, yeah. Uh, do you know Adrian Simon? She manages the Loud Luxury. So he no. rented a house okay. on there, I think, for like six months and paid like nothing. And this is like really, eh? four bedrooms, four bathroom, <laughs> oh, pool, shit. and everything. And it's like six. <laughs> it's like paying what like someone not would rent a two bedroom Damn. condo downtown. It's not true. Arizona Texas are the highest off. It sounded pretty good though. It sounded close. <laughs> it's sounded close enough. It's yeah, close yeah. enough. Like, but I know Texas, I, I, there, I, I maybe I miss misquoted and really. her, but I know that a lot of people are moving out there because like you know Vegas is known for the strip like right, whatever. Right. But I, yeah. there's I guess there's a lot more to it and like yeah. you're seeing it. Anyways, kind of irrelevant. The, the worst part is uh, I would I would sometimes go home late from the parties and you'll see sometimes the back then I had a lot. <laughs> yeah. all the time. But but. The worst part is when you see the people gambling at like 4 a.m. They're all smoking cigarettes and you know they lost and they're just that's on me. the jackpot. That's me. That. Yeah. I feel so bad after. I, uh, yeah, I also, know. It's, it's, it's rough. But I, I've had yeah. some, we've had some funny times. I've gone with Ricky. Like we've probably gone together three, three times. Three. And really, like, yeah, yeah we had some crazy, when we were younger, we were last like time, I'm not like a gambler, man. I get so addicted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not big at all. And I lose all the time. Yeah, I'm like, okay, you know what? But I can't stop. So I'm not Asian, bro. That's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I have the gene, you know? So he's, al he's allowed to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't say no, that. You say that. <laughs> Yo, it, it, it's true. Like, fuck, yeah. man. So, man, I, I get yeah. it. Um, when it comes to gambling, I'm good. Like, if I got 200 bucks and I, that's yeah. what I decided I was going to lose today, I'm good. I won't go to the bank machine. I'll okay. sit there and watch other people lose their money for three, four hours. Yeah. We got some friends. Remember that time in Miami when one of our friends, literally, he's in the high rollers room. Oh. And he lost. Like, yeah. 
We're talking Maybe, like, I don't, yeah, he lost. Because then he had to go back to the bank machine. Oh, yeah. Now and I then, then he might have won down the road maybe <laughs> after that. I don't know. But I, I was hot on that trip. I remember. It was like five, ten grand we're talking. We were like oh, 25, 26 at the time. Like, that's, yeah. that's fucking big yeah, money. That's like, huge, that, yeah. that hurts. Like, yeah, that yeah, really that hurts. Sucks. <laughs> um, just on that one thing on Vegas. You're talking about, you know, it's in the it's in the gene. I don't want to stereotype, but there's a game. There's a game, there's a game that is popular among the Asian community. It's called Baccarat or Baccarat, whatever you call it. Okay, never heard. It's like a crazy, I don't even know how to play it. I can't even explain but it's very popular i know it's popular amongst like it's uh like i think it's an asian game like yeah, a card yeah. game but it's big in like macau and everything but in okay. vegas it's, it's big yeah i've wanted to play i'm just curious like i'll play anything a little bit to learn it like i'm not a you good gambler it? so i wanted to and yeah. i was there was a table and there was an older asian gentleman and then like a, a fairly young one and then a couple ladies and there was like one one white guy sitting there caucasian mm-hmm. whatever you want to mm-hmm. say and like they look so intense and i was looking and i was like I kind of wanted to join. I hope when I go to grab the chair and the old Asian man looks at me, I was like, fuck this game. <laughs> I turned around and left the... Like, I practiced for years to be in Vegas. Because because they they like, but they have like techniques. They like... they. Okay, so I don't know how to explain it well, but it's crazy. They like bend the cards a certain way when you're trying to peek at them. There's yeah. like a technique where you can like... You're supposed to like... Because they're very superstitious. You're supposed to like bend them a certain way to see what it is. And then you have to like decide if you want to go... It's a crazy oh, game. It's that intense, and yeah. there's like a method to the madness. It's a blackjack of Asian people. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly? <laughs> or poker. Kind of, kinda, yeah. Anyways, yeah. crazy. Game. It's a what? It's a French, French game. game. Well, interesting. But that's interesting. maybe but just the Asians made it popular. Yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. It's pop. And like, anyways. Okay. Why not? French people over took over uh, Vietnam at one point. So yeah. Maybe that, somehow maybe they some blended yeah. in there. fucking play games together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to ask, what's your, your favorite Vegas story? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Can you even share it? Well, I can't share it right now. Cause <laughs> it's okay. She's not paying attention. Actually, she knows the story. I'm not going to say it though. You know so, the Vegas trip with Darren? So David's... Uh, I'm not going to say it though. David's girlfriend's in the in the audience as we speak. So yeah. <laughs> She knows the story. I told her that when we first met. We're pretty open about it. But um, I don't want to put Darren on the spot. He's one of my buddies. <laughs> Should have just kept but, his name out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have just said yeah. a buddy. <laughs> okay. 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 We'll bleep it There's out. There's a couple we'll of Darren's. No, no. We can, we can play this game. I'm trying to think of a better story. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad story, but like a, one that's not too bad. Hold on, <laughs> George. You think too, George. You think too. So well, well, everybody's thinking. Oh, I my best story is the buddy of mine. I had mine's easy. I'm not gonna say his name, but a buddy of mine who I'll, I'll never forget this. One of my buddies came down my 25th birthday. Yeah. I had like 11 guys come to Vegas. We did Coachella before that. Yeah, yeah. Went to LA for a bit. Went to Vegas. Like we had a big crew, <laughs> boys trip. Um. We had been before, so we knew how to roll. One of my buddies comes down, and and uh, I think he had been. But anyways, we're going to the pool party. We're going to Encore Beach Club, yeah. and we're all getting ready. We're getting our fits on, and he like he gets a he asked the room service for a Ziploc bag. Yeah, I was like, that's kind of odd, like yeah. doing something fishy. But then he puts a cell phone in it. I was like, bro, like we're going to like a, it's a, <laughs> we have a cabana. There's a safe inside. Like right, right, you don't right. got to put your phone in a Ziploc. Yeah, and he's like, trust me, it has to be in a Ziploc. I was like, okay. I kid you not, like an hour in, he comes back running frantically. So he's like, bro, I lost my phone. I was like, how? Because it fell in the pool. I was like, why would it be in the pool? He's like, well, that's how I put it in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> oh. I, was like, I was like, that makes no sense. We have a safe. You could have put it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so we lost his phone, but it was yeah. in a Ziploc bag in the pool. He's like, I'll be back. I'm going to find that. I'm like, dude, you're out of your mind. Like, just leave it. Let's have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just see him like run. I can tell never. Like it's Encore Beach, right? So people are like, it's waist deep water. People are probably yeah, pissing yeah. it. He dives in like a swimmer. Yeah. Starts like wading in the pool. I we, I forget about it. Go back to parting. He, I see him running across the deck like oh, 30 minutes later, like, like Baywatch, holding his phone in the air. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. swimming across the floor, just feeling everything. Yeah. Came out with his phone. Oh, shit. I don't know why. We found a phone. And it was a small iPhone, too. So, like, yeah, yeah. Little little guys. Anyways, it's not the most exciting story, but I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. That's interesting. Like, (laughs) you have to keep your eyes open underwater. You have to keep your eyes open underwater in a Vegas pool. Yeah, Yeah. it's a pretty dirty pool. You got (laughs) kind of nasty. That's uh, (laughs) that's my story. All right, back to you. My friend knows who he is on that one. Yeah, we all know. I was listening. I don't know. It's, uh, (laughs) I've had some. Okay, here, this one's not um, in Vegas, but I remember. Uh, this is in Toronto. We'll do that. Okay. It's one in Vegas. The one I was going to say is Yeah, too we, much. Can't, we can't put Darren. <laughs> yeah. We can't, <laughs> can't throw Darren under the spot. bus. Yeah. But um, I remember I, I hosted a, a call. I used to host a, like call the parties. Like every three months, just host it just for the brand. And I remember I used to get really wasted way before the party started. And I'm a lightweight. Awesome. I drink pretty quick and I get <laughs> drunk pretty quick. And so I remember I was trying to like... <clears throat> 
not get drunk and I was like drinking water and my head just like I'm like out of it and I start becoming like goofy and crazy and then uh I last about 3 a.m then everyone's like oh let's go to after party your office so I'm like okay so go to my office and I go there and somehow there was like 30 people there already and only two people had the keys so I'm like okay I guess they bought, brought people in and um I remember I was uh, I was trying to last that night and I was like drinking again. And then by the time I left, I was pretty much, uh, I was like, yo, can you call an Uber for me to my buddy who worked for me? And uh, the Uber comes and I called the Uber and I didn't know I called it. And then I started puking uh, in the washroom of my office first. <laughs> then I go out to the hallway, puke in the hallway. Then I go outside, puke there. I'm like, just destroy. Well, you're definitely a lightweight, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lightweight, dude. And then uh, I roll up the window. I roll down the window and I start puking out of the car while the car was driving. And uh, I come home and there's Popeyes and bubble tea and McDonald's ordered at the same time. <laughs> I had a thing. I love Popeyes back then. <laughs> and McDonald's. That's a good call. Some, fire, bubble but one fire. thing I was good at when I was drunk, though, was uh, I was able to get McDonald's, Popeyes, and bubble tea to come at the same well, time. Well, you, you have to By put something in your door. system because you just threw all of it up in the hall yeah, of the bathroom. Yeah, but I never ate it. It just it was <laughs> in my front door and I woke up and I saw it. I ate a Kinder <laughs> Surprise chocolate. Wait, you, Man, walked, past you, past you walked past it? You walked past it get in and then found it the next morning? Yeah, <laughs> and it was stale, so I didn't eat it. It's kind of bizarre. So, that was, it's not a crazy wild story, but that was like... That's the one that gave That's a story. Eh? That's Yeah, for now. Yeah. How do you wait? I got to ask, how do you get all three to arrive at the same time? Like, do you have three phones? Like three. Yeah, that's a good point. You can well, actually order more than order one yeah. meal on Uber, and it just—I had the best luck when I was drunk. It just all came at the same time. Wait, you can yeah. order more than one. You can meal? order. Th- yeah, you can order. Like, man, you know how I do it? Like once a month or something. Yeah. You learn something every day on this podcast. <laughs> I randomly. What like, the hell? Yeah, like once a month I'll randomly. I thought he's got order, three like, phones. No, like, no, no. Hey, hey, I'm about to leave. Ordering McDonald's. Yeah, he's yeah. like, Get my buddy to order. And you got the guy ordering <laughs> bubble tea. Yeah. No, I do yeah. it one, about once every like month or once every like six weeks. I'll order random people food. I'll yeah, be like, yeah. You're having a bad day. Hit me up. Like I got you today. Yeah, yeah. And I did it one day during when there was a snowstorm. I didn't realize that like Ubers don't deliver in snowstorms. Oh, they don't? Not really. They're all delayed and stuff. And oh, right. Once well, it gets delayed to a certain... They yeah, cancel they'll cancel. Yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. So I'm just like, you know, doing my orders. I put my phone down. I kind of like bug off. Yeah. Well, then like an hour later, I get all these cancellations and then they're like yeah. trying to rebook it. It's like, oh shit. Well, I feel bad because I just told this person I was going to help them make their day better. And it's yeah. like, these things cancel. So I'm trying to reorder. It was a disaster. But yeah, snowstorms don't Uber eats things. And you can order like as well. Well, it's not because they're because they're limited supply. People aren't on the roads yeah. as much, right? It's no, not it's just not, not, so yeah, They'll yeah. say once it hits, I think like an hour delay, they just cancel. Right, something right. like that. It's a weird one. Really? You know, I haven't Uber Eats anything yet this year. Not one. Oh, good for you. Wow. What do just, you do? You cook? I do, but I'm doing this like I'm not even gonna get into it because everyone who probably listens is tired of hearing me talk We've about the seventy five hard. We talk about this. But I did like uh, I'm doing a seven. Um, I'm doing a fitness or whatever. It's what called. is it fitness called? Mental challenge. Is We're not gonna uh, talk about this, but I'm doing a fitness hard? challenge yeah. called seventy five. Oh, you're doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that why you're not drinking? Yeah, Good not drinking, no food, nothing. So, anyways, you get, I'm just proud. Do you of work it outside. Um, uh, he's a cheating, <laughs> cheater, bro. I know this one. So, I used to try it. So I, I started the first month, all of January. I was doing both workouts. I was getting outside, even the snowstorms. Really? February, about like a week in, I was still doing it. And then it got started getting like cold and rain, like wet and, rain, and yeah, cold. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, it's kind of annoying. Right. So I started doing two indoor workouts. Mm-hmm. And then like I started to deviate a little bit because I was like getting burnt out. So I was like, I'd do like a couple times I did one workout. Okay. So if, technically speaking, like I'm not even embarrassed to admit it. Like I'm definitely not officially doing it. Yeah. But I haven't drank in seven and a half days. Um, That's good, I've man. read every day for seven and a half days. I've worked out at least once every day for seven Damn. and a half days, but a couple of days and yeah. Have you okay. guys? That's good. That's I'm, man, I'm pretty proud. I'm honestly and most proud good. of like, the not good. drinking and the not Ubering food. Yeah, no, it's freaking good. Because like your wallet. I know it's tough because I tried it. I gave up halfway because COVID happened. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just you made it halfway though. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's like, but. I mean, that's when I was like, at the breaking point. Like 30 days-ish in, 35 yeah. days, I was like. And it's hard because every, your friend's like, hey, let's go out for a drink or let's hang out. And you're like, no. want to have some water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, went to, I went to Parlor this past weekend. Shout out to our boy Ollie. <laughs> Great host. Um, they uh, Danielle and some friends were there, so my girlfriend and I went. We're both doing it, so we had a, like it was a lot of fun. But yeah. I I haven't been out to like a bar or club in a while. I mean, right, right. you know, we used to go all the time. Yeah. I haven't been in a while, so going after not going for a while is already like a sensory overload. Yeah. Being sober is like I'm like, what is happening? I felt like I was like high. I was like just yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. moving. I couldn't keep up with everything. Like, and I'm well, just yeah. sitting there drinking a bottle of water. I'm like, this is kind of people odd. watching gets taken to a whole new level when you're sober. You oh, notice, yeah. like you're like, everything. okay, well that conversation. Are they in a fight? Oh, yeah. did that drink just get thrown? Holy crap! Oh my god, that's just really someone detailed. throw a bottle across the bar. 
and they some I'm no I don't say the name. It's a buddy of ours. They threw a bottle. Someone was up on the booth, far from us to like caught it. Biggest, chucked it, grabbed it, shot. I'm like, what is happening? Uh. <laughs> it's a circus in here. Yeah, yeah. But, but you don't realize cool. when you're drunk. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're drunk. Yeah. When you're drunk. Like, you're oh, the one throwing the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you guys heard of that new challenge? It's uh, the David Goggins one. Oh yeah. Um, four no. four forty eight. Oh, Actually, runs four miles yeah. every four hours for forty eight hours. That I didn't know. That I read his wild. book. He did, but I didn't he, know about he, that. he did it. Yeah. Uh, he did it. Mm. And Lex Friedman, who's a big podcaster, who just had Elon Musk on his pod. Anyways, Lex Friedman's a buddy of Joe Rogan's. He did yeah. that challenge. I think. Maybe look that up because I'm like yeah. over three today. That's a, that's a cool <laughs> one. Though. But yeah, that's he, yeah, and he runs. Do you guys mind if I just move? You can do it. Yeah, 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 you do run. you, man. Right. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to look at you guys. I love it. Get cozy. Fix the mic. Daniel, make sure. Also, I love the fit today. This is this is fire. What are you wearing? Uh, okay, so Mike, this is Mike, Mike. Collar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I far, forgot right. about the mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is collar. Uh, this is a sample we're doing. Ooh, That's sick. yeah. Um, these aren't collar though. Um, so I'm not gonna shout that out. Good, I like I that. <laughs> and I like these that. are no Dr. Free <laughs> no, no free, free plug. plug. You gotta yeah, pay. Fuck, I love that. But love uh, that. stylish. Yeah. Do you still do the the collar parties? Uh, you know it's funny. When the last party I did was. Um, what was the last party I did? I'm trying to remember. It feels like forever, man, because of COVID. <laughs> I think the last one I did was probably right before COVID. Uh, no, it was probably my birthday, I think. Before, yeah, I did it at, okay, I remember. The last party was my birthday party, and we rented out the entire club of, uh, what club was that? It's one of Ryan's to promote at. Um, shit, hold on. Early? Love Child. Love, Love Child, okay. I, a person not a big fan of Love Child. Which one's Love well, Child? Well, Love Child has been around forever. It was but it's been there, it used to be called the, the, the Hawkson yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. Hawkson. It used to be the Hawkson, yeah. Yeah, so I did Love Child. We rented it out, and then we did like a whole like uh, wall with like like a presentation. Uh, and then people got like free. We got sponsored by like this weed company, and a Tweed, I think it was called. And we just gave out free CBD and like oh, vapes. Oh, so it's a party party. You know, vipes, vipes was just coming up at the time. And so we're giving out free uh, okay. vapes, and then everyone just got hammered, and I never remember anything. Man, I we need the invite to the next party. Eh? Like, I yeah, yeah. Georgian. <laughs> it's funny I haven't plus hosted a party for like three years, and Ronnie's been pushed because you know Ronnie yeah. loves hosting parties, right? So he's been pushing me to, uh, and he's like my wingman when it comes to parties. Like he sets helps me yeah, sets yeah. it up. So shout out to Ronnie and yeah, Ryan. Big shout out. <laughs> big shout out. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm thinking of hosting one this summer now that COVID's kind of coming down a little bit. So that'd be good. Um, yeah, I'm pr I, honestly, COVID made me a little bit relaxed. I'm not going to lie, but if uh, I'm down to party and have some fun, you know? Yeah, man. <laughs> part I, of I love it. Well, we said we're going to start hosting little parties in here too, man. We no like, way. we love it. We got some more <laughs> guests in here. Oh, the ham. Um, what, so wait, what led, like, um, why What's did you start doing these, the parties and the events stuff like that? Was it to like help build the brand? Was That's it just a good more question. Just have fun? Like what was the impetus so, behind it? When I was young, I didn't really know anyone in Toronto. Where are you and from? I, sorry. So I was actually born in Slovakia. No. Yeah. And then I moved to, okay. and then we moved to Toronto, Hamilton, Unionville, Toronto. So I moved to schools three, four times. I what, age, what age did you come here? Uh, around seven. Okay. So it's pretty much Canadian. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so I moved to schools because my mom was moving. Uh, I got kicked out of school twice. So... <laughs> A lot of okay. random ass <laughs> shit. Okay, let's, yeah, let's elaborate a little bit on that yeah, one. Yeah. Okay, wait, Dude, can you share why? <laughs> yeah, I've shared other podcasts. Oh, okay, let's hear it. So before I was a designer, uh, I've worked 30 different jobs. 30? 30. Like actually 30? Yeah, well, I'm rounding it. Okay. It was a lot. Probably one a week. All right. This I is switched. So my first job was at a gas station. I was 15. And it was a, yeah, so I remember I was working at a gas station and he would take these binoculars. like, my job was to go spy on the guy across the street because <laughs> I guess internet wasn't that good back then. And he would just look at, or apps wasn't existing for gas stations and I was spying the, the price and would be a penny cheaper. Come on. That, that was, was my job. <laughs> and I didn't really get paid for that job because he was like, hey, by the way, it's training is free for the first week until you get understand the job, I'll pay you. But for now, you can have any snacks you want. I'm like, my at the time, I was you were just having like, kind of yeah, job. Yo, cherry yeah. blasters, beef yeah, yeah. turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll take the free stuff. Oh, yeah, I and I it. thought that was normal to do free training. So week about two weeks later, he, he extended an extra week. So I was like, all right, he's giving us free snacks for now. So <laughs> two weeks later, I go to this gas station. And it's and he's like, the last day before he kind of tricked me, I guess. He's like, hey, by the way, my brother 
is an undercover agent in Dubai and he just got poisoned. I'm like, okay. He's like, I have to close the gas station tomorrow, but I'll let you know next week about your shift. So I show up next week, entire thing's closed. So I was like, okay, that was the first job. And then second Wait, job, like you just shut the gas station down? Yeah, yeah. So maybe his brother got poisoned. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully he's good now, but let's hope. Yeah, so that that was the first. It sounds story. like it's like a, a fucking it sounds intro like a t- to a movie. Like a or something. Yeah, yeah. No, this is uh, the Puppet Master. This is like the Puppet Master. I've never seen, seen it. Watch it. It's, okay. it's very similar to this. But continue. Okay. So second job. Second job was No Frills, and his name was Mario. And I remember this because this is the day I realized I want to be an entrepreneur. So I, for some reason, love putting my hands in my pocket, and I was t- I was putting these cans on the grocery stores. And or the racks, and then he's he caught me the the boss. He's like, "Why is your hands in your pocket?" And I'm like, "Oh, because I'm trying to figure out like where to put this can." So I want to leave my hand. I usually just put my hands in my pocket. He's like, "Don't ever put your hands in your pocket again." I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "Cause it looks like you're lazy." I'm like, "All right." And he caught me again, and he fired me. So after that, I'm like, oh, "Fuck this guy, he's a dick." So I'm like, <laughs> and I get it. Maybe he thinks I'm lazy, but that was just the way. That, I guess I had swag. I had my hand in my pocket. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I couldn't stand straight, but uh, no, I'm joking. But but basically, when when that happened, I was like, I kept getting really like dickhead bosses, and I'm like, you know what? I if I become a boss, I don't want to be like that. So I'm not going to detail for every job how I got fired or if I quit. But uh, so no frills, gas station, um, balloon decorator. So I can like decorate. Uh, like balloon animals? No, no, not that. That's like oh, a clown. Like, <laughs> like happy, happy, happy. How do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, but but it was uh, it was uh, <laughs> you've seen the movie, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know the reference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, got it. I actually showed Daniela that that reference the other day. The movie actually. Yeah. It was too violent for her though. She said. But um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, <laughs> going off topic. Anyways, so wait. I so worked, did you like paint on the balloons? No, so what I did was I actually like did these uh, balloons and I'll do like, uh, what was it? Like, how do I make arches. it sound like they're not oh, animals? Like- <laughs> I was a balloon engineer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like a, it was like arches. Uh, if you order like flowers, there'd be like balloons that like, it was crazy. Just type, shout outs to a company called Balloon Decorations. He's a balloon good friend de- of mine. He okay. actually is the reason why I became an entrepreneur too. He was my last real job before I went into doing collar, but- uh, we would have long rides in the car going to different spots. And I would remember going to these nice houses like bar mitzvahs and stuff like that. And growing up, I was, I was a poor kid. So like I would see this huge house. And I'm like, holy shit, like this is nuts. And uh, and we'd have these business talks in the car. And he's like, you should do this, you should do that. I'm like, no, no, I don't think I can. He put all this confidence in me. And then I started, uh, He, he I'm not to get too deep here, but he was telling me about like uh, manifestation and like how to get your things to come true. Yeah, yeah. And he pretty much uh, gave me the book called The Secret. So I read it and this sounds like too good to be true, but like I did a whole 180. Remember I told you I got kicked out of school. So I was sort of like doing the wrong things in life and I put all these things on my wall and it came true. This is a short version. I'm, I'm sure there was hard work involved too, but like uh, I changed my entire life and to this day, I still have like vision boards or notes of what I want. And every year I'm able to take them down. But I love that. But it's literally your mind so strong. But uh, not to get too serious. <laughs> no, but back it, to the, the the job stuff. I um, No, but on that point, like The yeah. Secret is one of the first books I ever read like for non-school related purposes. My mom handed it to me. Hmm. And it is like the first book that like kind of opens up your mind to uh, opens up your mind to how powerful like you are internally. Like if you read that book and don't, kind of think that you can do anything in the world then you didn't fully read it or you weren't paying attention when you were reading exactly it, it just talks yeah. about how like your mind is so powerful manifestation and just like the idea of envisioning what you are and what you want to become and all that stuff and yeah. it's actually super cool like i'm not a big reader like george is a big big reader but i wasn't either, I remember, to be honest, yeah i remember yeah. reading that when i was probably 17 or 18 in the summer actually time. I, haven't, I haven't read that book yeah i haven't you haven't if you want. no it it's okay. So just just I've like seen, what you I've seen saying. it. Like I've so some of it so sounds never like, a lot of people. Gonna lie, yeah, right? a but lot like, of people. Will, if I talk about it, they'll be like, "Oh, it sounds like some fairy tale, or like, like some fairy like, stuff, yeah. like the magic or whatever." Right? It's not real. <laughs> so I'll tell you what happened to me, so you can understand like why. Yeah, was that's what I was gonna ask too. Is because like, this first hand experience. You said you changed the one eighty. So like, yeah. what is, like what does that mean? For, okay, like, so for you? again, I guess back it, it kind of relates to what we're talking about. The the twenty third different jobs I worked at was like no frills, spring rolls, gas station. I know spring rolls. 
Spring rolls is good. I don't know. I dropped plates. Man, did, did, wait, did, they, did they just feed you or did they pay you? No, they paid me. <laughs> was it, was for it a week, they got fired. Spring rolls was a saga, I think. Cinnabon. I worked at Cinnabon. Oh, oh, college oh. station. Fuck, bro, Which one? I got mess. fat after eating that. <laughs> that was that. You said you they gave me that. free Cinnabon every night. What? Yeah. Cinnabon. Uh, uh, college station. College station. Dude, you. I just walked by one the other day at Fair, uh, Fairview Mall, Where's and you forget how good it smells when you yeah. walk by. Like, yeah. it just takes up the whole hallway. It's the it's it's oh, so good. It's I love truth. It. It, it really is. Danielle, yeah. we need them as a sponsor. God, that'd be good. Yeah. Oh, no. Man. If you guys had Cinnabon right now, uh, I would be coming we'd all, Yeah, here. we'd all be fat. Eh? I'd be promoting the shit out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the key to his heart. Yeah. So, but, yeah. yeah, so I worked, you know, I worked at, Old Navy, Lacoste. Um, I was a manager for shoe stores. I worked at a fraud department at CIBC. I worked pretty much anything I thought was cool. So I grew up with a single mom, right? So I didn't really have a dad to like show me like how to be a man. So what I did was I watched a lot of movies as a kid. I was also an actor. I was. I had Bro, a Pepsi you have commercial done everything. Yeah, Wait, you were in dude, a Pepsi commercial. Yeah, I had a couple commercials. I looked for the file. I'll send it to you. But I, I, I did like a, a short film for film festivals. And then I realized I was shit fucking actor. So <laughs> I still try to try to do auditions yeah. now just for the fun of it, but I'm fucking shit. That's the truth. <laughs> My sister's like, dude, you fucking suck. And I'm like, <laughs> it's so like, weird. I'm sitting here watching I'm you, good at, I guess. and you know, I don't know what it is. You, were, I'm trying to pinpoint who you remind me, but you remind me of somebody from like movies. <laughs> I, you know, and the first that comes to mind, and it's I don't know exactly because you don't have an accent, but you kind of yeah. give me the vibe. Um, Taika Waititi. He's a, he's a very he's a he's a Marvel he's a New Zealand director and actor. He was in jo, uh, Jojo Rabbit. He was Hitler in Jojo Rabbit, I guess. And he's, he plays he plays Korg. He directed the what? Marvel movies. No, no, he's, he, you look you look similar no, to him. I'm gonna pull, Google Daniel, pull it up and turn the screen around. Taika Waititi. He's a very famous. He won like a, he won like an Oscar. Are you serious? Yeah, like he's fucking hilarious. And I Dave look, is it, like, no, that, that ain't it. <laughs> no, no, no. You look. All right, let me like check him. after. Let and me if check. you had a New Zealand let accent, I think you'd be identical. <laughs> Can you see? What the no, fuck? No, no, no. Not the beard picture. Pick a different one. No yeah, beard. Vic one like. That's like a 180. <laughs> He's like 60, dude. Am I wrong? I thought you were going to say the guy me. from Crazy Rich Asians or whatever. Okay, oh. never mind. Bad example. But okay, you know what? I can kind of see. Kind of an older I've version. I've been my hair and it's kind of wild right now. So if I can had, see if that. You, if, you looked, if you were older, 60 years old, and you had some grays. When I'm 60, I'm going to send a selfie to you. <laughs> and we can talk about this. I, he looks younger than the movies I remember. But anyways. Okay. That's, I don't know I why. I can kind of see it. Yeah, I can see so it. Yeah. I, I, it's funny because I'm looking. I'm like, this guy could be an actor. I see my girl just laughing I, I insulted everyone in this room right now. <laughs> I thought you were going to yeah. say the guy from like, Crazy Rich Asians. You know that? Oh, I've been told that. That dude. That's, just, is, that's racist. No, no, no. no, 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 no you can't. Just kidding, just, so he's half good. white, half Asian too. That's yeah, why. Yeah, 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 I'm joking. I'm just kidding. But Except no. he's a good actor. No offense. Yeah, he is. No, yeah. but that's why I feel like because because I thought yeah. of that guy for some reason. I was like, oh, this guy could be a decent actor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. Where are we even at? I'm trying to get back. I swear all three of us ADD at this point. Yeah. 100%. That's the best part about having a podcast. You can talk about whatever you want. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember what I was saying. Oh yeah, so I worked different jobs. Yeah. And uh I remember uh I'm totally fucking confused where I'm at. So right we're talking now. about how um how the secrets changed your life. Oh right, right. Yeah, okay. and then you're talking about you had all these different jobs, you had single mother, you were Dude, kind of- imagine we were drinking right now. And we're talking. I, I could have a I drink think, right now. That'd be impossible. Yeah, yeah. Impossible. <laughs> we would be yelling just, at each other. This would be a five hour conversation. <laughs> We'd be staring at, I'd be telling you, like, that was the a, chemistry that's is a bad natural. enough example the as it was is with here. the comparison. Imagine I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to break his 75. Feel I'm bad. not having, I'm not having. I'm staying right. strong. Okay, okay. No, no, I'll have one in a second. Okay. Okay. I don't want to start ordering Popeyes McDonald's to your door, dude. <laughs> <laughs> don't throw up in the bathroom. That's it. Yeah, you can order Popeyes. Uh, I'm going to finish green tea and then I'll start making decisions on that. But, uh, but yeah, so I worked different jobs and, and then I was saying something about, oh, the secret. Okay. So I worked different jobs and the main thing for me is that, you know, I, I was used to get paid minimum wage and I never thought I could build a business and make money from it. And when I met Steve, who's a balloon decorator, so the company's got balloon decorations. For anyone that needs balloon decorations, visit balloondecorations.ca. It's <laughs> a free and, uh, plug. I like that. <laughs> but my mom orders balloons things. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's great. And uh, hopefully, like, with COVID slow, slowly getting better, that the balloon business will get better too. But, uh, yeah, so when I was in the car with him, he's a wise guy. He's, like, in 40s, 50s, and he's been through a lot. And so he was telling me, like, I was – Telling him like stories about like what I'm doing with school and stuff. I was like college for HR, hated it. 
um, wasn't really smart with school and stuff, but I just kind of did it. But mom's like, cause, cause I got kicked out of school twice. Mom's like, oh, you should, uh, if you don't like finish school, I'm going to send you to Vietnam to be an actor. You'd be great at it. I'm like, what the fuck? I don't want to go there. I'm not trying to go. For- <laughs> and, and my sister told me I yeah, sucked. Yeah, like- yeah. So, so I remember um, when I was in school and I was doing balloon decoration. So it's a college job, I guess. And I was trying to make money on the side. Uh, I was really good at graphic design. I taught myself everything. Everything I know to this day was self-taught from uh, tech packs, design, uh, how to do a trade show, how to do sales. I, I didn't go to school for any of that stuff. School's great. But I just learned everything hands on, but I also lost a lot of money because of that, because you don't know what you're doing. You're trial, kind of, and trial and error, right? So when I was building my business, uh, before I even had a business, uh, I was on Kijiji and I was like, what kind of job can I get to get paid more on the side while I'm doing balloons? And I saw graphic design freelancing job. So there's a guy named Anthony and he was like, hey, like uh, your stuff's really good. So I was actually doing web design, graphic design for companies like Structube, uh, Canon, so it's companies like that. Shrek tubes around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right yeah. Around so I did their website. And Anthony would pay me like $20 an hour. And at the time, minimum wage was like, I think it was like eight. <laughs> so this is probably nine. like 2005-ish, give or take. No, no. This was like 2014. Oh. Yeah. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe probably would have been around wrong. like ten, uh, nine. Whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, we're talking yeah, about exactly. eight, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, it would have exactly. been ten, probably ten twenty five. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's so basically what would happen is, um, what was it saying again? I'm trying to remember. Minimum wage, twenty bucks an hour. Websites. Oh, websites. Yeah. So I see this guy. He's, I'm getting paid twenty bucks an hour. So I'm like, I was thinking to myself, like, you know, how much are this guy making off the site? So I'm like, Anthony, you don't want me asking, like, how much are these companies paying you? And he's older. He's like probably in late 30s. And he's successful. I would come to his house and he worked out of his house and like in a nice house. And he was like, oh, like these guys are paying me 30000 to 100 k for a website. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. I know that even existed. And I know I could bang out a website in five hours. And I'm like, what if I charge people 500 bucks? And I had this idea to start a web design company. And that's where my first entrepreneurship started. And then Steve would be in the car. He's like, oh, well you know, you should advertise. I'm like, no, no, no. Like I was always thinking on the, uh, the day of and not for the future. And I didn't want to waste money for something that wasn't guaranteed. And he's like, no, you got to do it. You got to think bigger than that. Cause I was very small minded back then. And he's like, no, no, you have to think bigger. I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, okay, I'm going to pay the hundred dollars for you to advertise. Cause I made a web design company at the time. And, but he's like, before I pay you, you got to read the secret and you actually have to put this into play and then if you get a client you can pay me back if you don't you don't have to pay me i'm like oh fuck it's a great deal so i had all these vision boards at the time i was living in like a government housing area it was a bad area uh there'd be like crackheads outside screaming f- like random shit i couldn't even sleep because of that and then anyways there was like bed bugs in the house like it was the worst environment so for me i pretty much said okay you know what i have nothing to lose i'm like you know my mom came from slovakia very poor so she even sold a wedding ring to feed us. Like we were very poor. And so as a single mom taking care of three kids, I had to kind of learn to do everything myself. That's why I worked so many jobs, but I hated everything, right? So um, I put these, I printed out these pictures of how much I want in my bank account, what kind of car I want to drive. And I remember I just had this Honda Civic, nothing wrong with Honda Civics, but it would constantly break down. And I remember I crashed, uh, I hit something with the <gasps> Honda Civic and it was like, it would like make noises when I was driving. So I'm like, fuck, I can't go to meetings with this Honda Civic. They're not going to trust me. <laughs> so I, I remember it from all the jobs I've had when I was growing up. It made me know how to do sales. And I didn't realize that it was teaching me things. So I'm really good at sales because of all the sales jobs I had. And what had happened is when I was... Um, oh. <laughs> You're a full house in here today. Yeah, I love yeah, this, yeah. Right? yeah. So what had happened was when I had um, uh, the sales job, I pretty much realized that I could use these skills to sell websites. So I printed out all the things I wanted in my life. Uh, I would put like these things on my wall. So part of the secret and why people think it's like weird is because you're literally visualizing things you want to happen, but you also have to work for it too, right? A lot of people just visualize it and just like cross my fingers. But I think like um, for... 
for the way it happened is I would put these things in the wall every time I'd wake up in the morning I'd actually close my eyes and visualize it already happening until I had like goosebumps until it actually felt like it was real and when that happened the first two weeks I had the website up and at the time I was advertising Kijiji so it was like a hundred bucks to be there for a full month and I would look at the competition and they were all like old companies because everyone was advertising Google at the time so so it's on Kijiji and I'm and I'm seeing that you know at the time I knew how to like do Instagram and Facebook so I put like packages on top for free so first two weeks no one called I'm like fuck this thing doesn't actually work like it's bullshit this I'm gonna throw this book away and you had to just keep even though it's not happening you gotta keep believing it next thing you know I got a phone call I'm like oh okay I'm like hey uh David and Design that was the company back then <laughs> And uh, that was the first name you came up with. Yeah, right? that was the best fucking name I could think of, dude. <laughs> but anyways, I picked the, I picked up the, the call, and he uh, he's like, "Yeah, I need a website, this and that." And I quote him for five hundred bucks. He's like, "Yeah, that sounds pretty good." I'm like, and I would lie because I didn't have an office. I was living in this shitty place, and I was like, "Hey, can I uh, can I meet you after work? Because I'm booked up for the whole day." So I would meet people at Starbucks and like McDonald's, <laughs> and so. And I would just like, f- like pretty much fake it till you make it really like pretend I had an office and yep. I didn't. And what had happened after <laughs> is, um, these calls started coming in and I started getting all these $500 jobs and I was finish them in like three, four hours. So I'm like, man, I don't have to do balloons anymore. I'm like, this is way better. I can work from home. My boxers, my robe, whatever fuck I want to wear. <laughs> I just fucking work on it. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when that happened, I started visualizing, I'm like, I want to be like Anthony. So I'm like, Anthony, I was still work for this guy, Anthony, right? His company's called Atticus Wolf at the time. So I'm like, can I just come to your meetings with you? And I'll just watch and just watch his mannerism, watch the way he talked, watch his look at the contracts, watch what he negotiated. And that was my school. I pretty much just watched this human being that I thought was super successful. And I was like, trying to understand how he closed these big deals. So then one time I got this call and he wanted to build a site similar to Kijiji or Facebook and I knew this wasn't a $500 job. So I got so busy that I didn't want to do these $500 jobs anymore. So I was like, okay, well, you know, to be honest, this because I have experience listening to Anthony, I knew what the job was worth at this point. So I wasn't just winging it. So I'm like, t- Anthony was telling me, oh, like, you know, uh, he was quoting jobs for 30, 40 K. So I quoted him at about 20 K and I know he was shopping around. And I, m- one thing I was really good at back then was making it look bigger than it was. And I think that's a secret to entrepreneurship when you're starting a brand. You got to make yourself look really big yeah. so people trust you. So it's funny because when I was doing that, uh, I was like, okay, if this happens, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I'm like 22 at the point, at this point, right? 22 or 23. And so... <laughs> the party's jumping. Party we gotta start yeah, popping man, some champagne. We got a lot of man. There's a charging mission to come in here. I actually have no idea who's coming here. I thought that was like yeah, Becca. Okay. There's no people all rolling in. Pizza place, though, <laughs> Apparently, eh? no, no free shot. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So basically, what had happened after is uh, I keep getting lost track. Of We're time. at the twenty thousand dollar job. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so I'm like driving this shitbox hundred stuff that's like cracking on the floor. I had to park at the grocery store and walk over because I, I didn't want them seeing me driving that. There's no way they're closing a 20K yeah, job. you can't right? fake it. No, you make it. Not, not that area. Honda Civic that's bumping yeah, yeah, around. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, no. So I was wearing a suit. I, I made myself look like I was killing it. And I'm also was young. I was 22, 23. And they're trusting someone with a lot of stuff here. And I made myself seem like I had a full team. I'm like, yeah, let me get my guy this, this, that. My contract look amazing. So I go in. And I start pitching my thing. And I'm before I go in, I sit in my car, visualize me shaking his hand, like signing it. It's done. Because everything in contract, then it's done, right? And I got so good at sales that I was able to close deals without meeting people, just talking over the phone. And so then the big jobs, I have to actually meet them. And so I met this guy and he had signing the contract. And by the, I remember at 22, 23, I was used to, again, making the minimum wage. My goal was to do 100K for the year so I could live in a regular place that didn't have bed bugs or whatever that crap was and like live in a better area, live in a real house, a condo. And so at the end of the year, by just focusing, I literally didn't care about partying, didn't care about girls, nothing drinking that, that year was just like, I wanted to just like change my life. And, uh, with the, with me visualizing all that stuff and just putting the work and researching, like I'd be going to school, do the balloon stuff, this, the website and then go to bed like 3 4 a.m but i did it every day 
And so, yeah, that year I got everything I wanted. You were, sorry, 22, 23 at the time you said? Yeah. So I was like, holy crap, like this is, uh, you know, really amazing because I actually was able to put everything uh, I wanted to come into life. And then I got really, I got so busy. I started actually hiring people. And then what had happened is I got really cocky and I was like, oh, I'm going to keep getting calls and I'm not going to visualize anymore. It's too much work. I just want to wake up and do whatever I want. Fuck visualizing. <laughs> and at the time, I was really big into clothing. I love fashion. I, I was looking up to like- I was brands. actually wondering where this kind of took the fashion twist. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm like, okay, we've been talking How much about time this we website. Got? You okay, said, we got to have 25 oh, okay, minutes. Okay, okay. I'm trying to- but, um, No rush. Yeah, so what had happened is, um, and I'll tell you how it led to fashion. I've always loved clothing. Um, and I remember when I used to skip school because I hated going to school. I would like go well, shopping. You got that already. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd go shopping or look at clothes. And I used to be when Pharrell and um, Bape and like that kind of style was really Those big. Shark hoodies or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Pharrell. All the way up to the I always wanted like, one. Never got yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, I never got one too. But <laughs> when when that stuff kind of like start getting bigger, I um, I started like uh, really getting to fashion. Right. So. So what had happened was what I did was I took the 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 money I made and I started spending on stupid crap like uh, my buddies come out like yo dude let's I'll, I'll, it's on me I'm like young and I'm like Man, getting all this it, easy eh? money for like it was crazy like I, I was just like and I got the car I wanted everything I wanted at this age and I was like I literally was able to do everything I wanted and then what had happened is I stopped visualizing all of a sudden I. Uh, Everything, the phone stopped ringing. I lost all my money. And I think I had like $5,000 left. And I was like, okay, <clears throat> uh, I'm going to quit school. Fuck it. Because I'm like, I know I don't want to go to school. Wait, what were you in school for at this point? HR. I don't remember anything from it though. We're going to add that. We're going to add that to Where were you going to school? Seneca. Okay. Yeah. But I, I would like, the parties were crap there back then. And I was, <laughs> but Aren't they still crap? Yeah, they're still probably crap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Seneca. <laughs> no, but, uh, but, um yeah so when that happened and oh yeah so this story was the reason why i started doing parties i was you know, yeah because that's i was a, where minute, is this going? a minute ago i was just thinking that i'm like i'm like i think i asked why the parties are happening and i was yeah. like i don't even remember how we got here but yes yeah, you right. have to but part of it was i didn't realize that i had party fomo because i went to a school that didn't have parties and you also did so, party for like a year yeah yeah so so basically at that age i was like okay like i want to so after I started building, uh, I said I lost all my money. I, I was like, yeah, I'm going to visualize that I'm going to build a brand that everyone in Toronto will know. And I'm going to visualize, like these are plans that, listen, like I, at that time I had no confidence that this would even come to life. Like I was like, okay, hey, I'm going to build a brand that people are going to love. Uh, I'm going to make this X amount of money. I'm going to go to a trade show in Vegas. I've never been in Vegas, never traveled anywhere. That was my first spot. And I was like, I'm going to, make a collection. I have no factory, no connections, no nothing. I had no clue how I was going to do it, but I just visualized it. And then I started talking to random people. I started getting factory connections. People, things started happening. It was weird. And then I took all my money and I put it all into uh, making these samples. And back then, Zane World was the biggest brand. I remember that. Yeah. They were huge. Yeah, Everyone had I, those cuff I, pants. That's right. And cuff I, pants. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, yeah. Australian vibe. DB that still was... wears them from 2013. <laughs> one of our buddies. I actually just stopped. My, I, one of my favorite jeans was a pair of those, actually. And I just stopped wearing them like two years ago. Oh, really? really? Yeah. yeah they had a Rick, Rick also shops. I'm not going to lie. They're comfy. They're comfy. Rick yeah, shops cool. in the sport check clearance rack. Yeah. So I'm, it's all good. don't I'm take a his. Uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a cozy shopper. He's trying to be comfy. I don't know, man. Man. And buy my jeans at like Walmart. I'll hook you up, man. I'll hook you up. I feel he, bad now. He needs the help. He needs the help. <laughs> I need the help, man. No, no. No, no. It's how you wear. It's how you wear. Ricky couldn't get style if he had the visualized style for you. Dude, I, I had... I'm kidding. Dude, I'll be honest with you. I was in middle school. I used to wear like like a zip-up hoodie with no t-shirt on. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> and girls... I remember in middle school, girls like, do you have a t-shirt on you? I'm like, no. And they're like, what? <laughs> and then I would like wear like uh, sandals. In the winter, I thought it was not cool to wear a jacket so i'd wear a t-shirt to school but it just made me look like crazy because in everyone's the winter like, yeah canadian winter yeah i did worse shit as a kid i remember um you were that kid that you know when you walk by downtown you see that one random kid wearing like t-shirt and shorts and minus 10 you're like really? yeah, yeah that was me probably yeah yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah just kid, too young to be a cracker yeah. what the hell's going on right now like that was yeah. you 
Yeah, I took everything f- like as a kid. I remember there was pe- you were in pizza pockets. Yeah, of yeah. course. Of course so, he does. Daniela knows the story, but I I love pizza pockets. I I saw <laughs> commercials. I was a young kid at the time, so I saw commercials of pizza pockets, and I literally would tell my mom to buy it, and I would heat up these pizza pockets and put it in my pocket. Shut the fuck up. And I put a juice box in another pocket. <laughs> And then I'll go to school and the teacher's like, oh, what the hell? Bro, I, I thought it was actually for that pizza pocket. <laughs> Get the fuck I'm out not of kidding, here. dude. I'm not kidding. You did that. that. Is this the you did it too? No, no. Oh, no. I was like, yo, we're best friends. <laughs> All right, I'm the only that, weird guy that's, here. Okay. That's, that's a crazy good. one. That's that's the teacher's like, where's your lunch? I'm like, to my pocket. She's like, oh, poor kid. I don't. Sorry, I'm <laughs> but, uh, I love pizza pockets. Yeah, but okay, back so to the story. <laughs> back. This, this is honestly like I'm. This is like up and down. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually so. People are like the people yeah. who listen to me. Like what the f- like? Where are we going here? <laughs> pizza pockets. Like yeah, like, that's the clip. Eh? Then yell pizza pockets in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so but like, where we? How do we? How do we? We're, we're at the the part where you ran out of money. You got the samples made. Do the parties? Doing the parties. Right, actually, no, we're right. right at the part where manifesting. You're telling, yeah, telling yeah. us about the parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, so. I'll try to expedite it, but long story short, I oh, went to a trade long show. Story. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no long story short at this point. Dude, yeah. <laughs> this, I feel like grandpa tell my this, grandkids uh, like this is honestly ten great. years. No, no, but just honestly, we ask some people ask questions, and we have to like pull answers out of them. Oh, okay, yeah, we yeah. literally asked, "How did the party start?" <laughs> oh, pizza we got pockets. Of pizza pockets and t-shirts yeah. in the yeah, cold. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, but anyways, <laughs> I went to a trade show, and I literally would do all these like interesting marketing ways because i realized these trade shows these buyers they won't see you unless you have an appointment and i had zero stores at the time that was carrying my brand uh so what i would do is i would look up brands that uh sold brands that look similar to mine and i would call these stores and i'd be like hey by the way uh you know i saw you carry this brand and that brand and i would actually photoshop um that there was certain people online that was buying my stuff from certain areas wherever the store was located so this is like you don't learn this in school this is me trying to be trying to get stores because yeah, yeah. they won't give me the time of the day i'm like oh where are you from oh cool how many stores are you in zero okay okay bye. Fuck off, yeah. that's how people are right so, what, what, like so for <laughs> me i was like that. okay they want someone that they what can i give them instead of me taking from them right so i had to you know i had to do what i had to do but i had to photoshop where fake uh, customers in certain areas. So let's say there was a store in Orlando that wanted that had a good store. I would have to show a bunch of Orlando sales with fake information and be like, and attach in the email and be like, hey, look at how much sales we get in Orlando. Imagine that a spot to try on the clothes, and I can give you these clothes. And then I, oh, and so I would sell them over the phone with like these techniques I had, and I started opening like stores. But before I opened stores, I I first got them to the actual show so when they got the show a lot of them didn't show up so i'm like fuck and then i would try to get random traffic that was walking by and i couldn't even talk to them because like oh sorry i don't know who you are i have an appointment and it was funny the first show i've had zane Rob was across from me and he was like my idol at the time you know he's a young guy, he's australian throwing parties and he came up to me he's like oh like my booth was tiny and he's like just one day you could be like us i'm like ah, i hope and he's giving me like motivation stuff and so what had happened is these people were walking by, they wouldn't give me the time of the day. And I was my buddy Dylan at the time. And I was, I was like, how do I get these guys to come in? I, and I can't get them in. I'm like, once they're, they're in, I think I can get them to close. So I got alcohol in the back <clears throat> and I started offering them drinks. And that sometimes worked. And so that, so what I had to do was like, okay, if I saw someone that I felt like they had an interesting like vibe to them, or like they're into like certain music. If someone like had ro- a rocker vibe, but maybe they're into like more rock music. Yeah, if yeah. they're into urban clothes, they might be into like rap music. So I'd be like, hey, do you know who Drake is? It's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, like that's where we're from. And Drake was just kind of like getting more popular at the time. And I would use stuff like that. And they're like, oh yeah, I know where Drake's from. Like from Toronto, right? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, crazy. And so... And Speaking so, of the king of Xanarobe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Is he wearing? Oh, he's wearing? Nah, he's no, not. No, we no, finally no. got some. Wow, the guy's actually looking pretty nah, good. He's got the J's on, though. Okay, wait. We got, we got to stay back <laughs> on track. <laughs> the, guy's, the, guy's, the guy's crypto's yeah. going up. Sorry, wait, we got to stay back on track. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Drake, Drake. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Drake. Thanks. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so every time someone walks in, I fucking... Don't worry. You know, like, Ricky can tell you I'm the same. My fucking stories go like this. Yeah. I can't keep track of where I'm yeah, going half the time. Dude. No, worry. Well, I'm, that's why I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay. Doing a good job. Doing a good so, job. So basically, these people come in and I would use these techniques like, oh, like Drake, this, that. Shh. And he'll be like, oh, cool. Like, I know who Drake is. Like, and they'll be like, oh, you're from there. We know no one from Toronto that's here. I think I was like the only brand in Toronto at the time that was at a trade show. Uh, other than like your big brands, like Can of Goose, stuff like that. Uh, there was Nike, Reebok, all the big brands were there. And that's where you meet like the big stores like Nordstrom, etc. But so I had to be, be smart about it. So I got all these people to come in by using people's name like Drake and like... Uh, uh, give them alcohol, chocolate. And as soon as they're in, uh, I would actually get them to um, be interested in it. And then we end up, I think, placing 10 orders with retailers. So I went home. I was like, oh my God, I'm be fucking rich. But it wasn't just, it, I realized, I was, I was young. I didn't realize what business was going to be like. And I got all these orders. Then I was like, wait, I use all my money on the trade show. I have no cash to buy these products. fulfill these orders yeah, yeah you have to buy it with your money they don't give you the money yeah. and they don't pay for net 60 days so it takes four months to make it then you have to wait another two months to get it and then you're gonna make a new collection on top of it before that comes out so that was a big like shock to me right so i i had bad credit back then i was like buying a bunch I, of clothes i could have no guessed reason. that part no, 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 no. <laughs> i figured enough. that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but i don't know so what had happened is i uh i started uh asking friends and family for cash and I had to really like be serious about this and like pay off these debts if I had them. And so, you know, just because of time, I'm going to expedite it, but long, long story <laughs> short, <laughs> but basically it's going to, it, what had happened is, uh, you know, I made all these mistakes and we ended up opening all these retailers, uh, down the road. Um, and while that was happening, Back to your original question, why I was throwing parties, was because when I was at Seneca, they had shit parties, and I was saying I had a bit of FOMO, so I was like, okay, I want to throw more parties, and I saw a movie called um, The Great Gatsby. Yeah, that's a good movie, right? Who's here? Movie? That's a good. Your favorite movie? Interesting. It is a good one. What's that? <laughs> it's definitely okay. <laughs> Cool. It was okay. So, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Michael Michael's here. He knows him. Michael. Yeah, yeah. All right, fashion guy, relax. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, the big short. <laughs> he watches the big short every night to remind himself that money does not sleep. Okay. Are you the stocks? <laughs> he's a he, he's a he's a he's a money manager. Oh no way. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, okay, we're, 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 we're doing well. We're doing yeah, yeah. yeah. We're doing good here. Yeah, yeah. Seneca uh, throwing parties. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Gary so, so, but, yeah. So okay, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, at the time, you know, I didn't know anyone in Toronto and I was like, you know what? I want to throw some fun parties because at the time parties were cool. You had like all the parties that people were hosting, but it was very clubby. And I wanted to host a house party vibe. Everything I hosted, I wanted to be like a mansion party or house party. And I remember watching Great Gatsby. It was in a big mansion. And so when I first started the call of parties, I was like, how do I make this more like a house party? So when I started hosting parties, I tried to invite everyone and i would get all the guys that knew a lot of people in toronto to invite people and i was able to sell the clothing that way as well to build a lifestyle like you know with covid happening and stuff like i haven't partied much because i kind of like stopped but at that time i was partying like i was hosting parties every three months i was kind of like a promoter in a way yeah. and um and it was interesting because when i was hosting parties i was actually filming it too like if you go on youtube you can actually find all this old footage of like parties we used to host and it looked really fun compared to a regular club and we would get like sponsorships from like bud light uh we would get celebrities like sean mendes to come we would have free cigarettes i didn't think they had jewels back then so free cig like did we throw cigarettes <laughs> mike's got a party there you go buddy you come to this party <laughs> we had fuck we had cigarettes we ordered every people knew i loved mcdonald's at the time so i ordered like free mcdonald's every time for everybody so i just wanted to make it fun and i just for me like building a brand was not just like making money it was entertaining so even I do runway shows i don't like doing regular runway shows i'd make a movie before the runway show starts um sorry my throat was dry <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that story's been <laughs> uh yeah so i'm trying to remember what else uh so we got the part so 
you, you ran yeah, out of sorry, the money. Okay. So you did yeah, the so parties. I was, I was made, I'm these assuming parties. you made some money from these parties. No, actually, beginning, I didn't make too much money out of it. I was just getting sponsorships. Okay. And then when the parties were popular, club owners would start paying me and give me free bottles, this and that. And, you know, house parties were really fun, but then it was really hard to get a good house party warehouse without getting it shut down. So I started doing it in clubs. That's where I met Ronnie, became best friends, and then met Ryan. So, you know, me and Ryan and Ronnie, like, we haven't hosted something for, like, years. I think the last one we hosted together was at Love Child for my birthday. But if we did something, it would be crazy. But, like, I, I tell these guys, like, when, when they try to host a party, like, yeah, let's host it here. I'm like, wait, what are we going to do for the party? And he's like, oh, we're going to just invite people and we're going to have bottles. I'm like, no, nah, I, can't, I can't go to that party. I'm like, if we're going to host a party that's for caller, we have to try to get McDonald's in there. Free cigarettes. Ping pong tables. Ping pong. Free, yeah, I had ping pong tables. Like, nah, I, I, try don't, to I don't want to make the like Asian joke party. here, but... Like, <laughs> <laughs> do they make ping pong? <laughs> oh, buddy. They oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> They're crazy. Crazy ping yeah, pong. Yeah, they do. We need some gambling. Yeah, yeah. We'll get some casinos in there. Baccarat, baby. Baccarat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I just... Uh, yeah, so that's why I started hosting, like, like parties because I went to, like, parties and I wasn't satisfied. And I was like, how do I make this more fun? And so that's kind of the story about. So uh, that's what I asked you because this doesn't appear that there's is a correlation. Was it? Right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I just to um, <laughs> Was it like to help? But was it mostly because you wanted to just do it as part of the brand or to drive business of the brand, or it was like if it if it brings business, great. If not, yeah. there's going to be sick parties, and that's what I wanted. Like it's part of the, your yeah whole story. I <laughs> feel like uh, it's been everything. I think at the time, I was very young, and I was like, I wanted to. I had like all this ambition and I was like, I can't, this may sound weird, but I, I didn't want to be just like a, like a normal person. I was like, I want to make money. I want to build like a brand. I want to like build a lifestyle behind it and all these things. And do I have to put it closer? All right, you're good. Okay. But, uh, so all these things I wanted to do and it all kind of came to play because I realized later that people, this is not for me, but like when I talk to people that like caller, the brand, they would they would say, you know, I love when you used to make those videos, and I'm like, they like following the journey because they can feel like they're part of it. And yeah. not only when you're watching the video, you can actually come to the party to experience it, and then you come to the pop up shops to to like like live the journey with us as a brand. So to me, it was like a whole journey, and it was more like a story that people can kind of live through and actually experience it themselves. And yeah, and, and you know what? Cool. You can see it come full circle. It's like you watch the video, you think the party's sick, you go to the party, that's the yeah, party, yeah. you see the clothing, then you buy the clothing, then right, right. you wear the clothing, then you're in the next video at the next party in the clothing. It's like a, a full cycle, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. And, it, and it's funny because... Well, that's exactly what building a brand is, right? Like It's not yeah. just, again, everybody makes jeans, everybody makes t-shirts. What differentiates you from them, right? The sense of community, the sense of belonging, the sense of atmosphere, vibes, like exactly, the whole yeah. story. And I think the main thing for me was like a lot of brands just had a brand. And because I was kind of the face of my brand, like a lot of, because it's my last name. At first, I didn't actually didn't want to call it Caller because... David and Clothing. <laughs> that was the first name, man. Eh? Yeah, probably. Okay. <laughs> I had a brand before Caller. It was so bad, dude. I can't even tell you the name because you're going to Google it and you're going to laugh hard. Tell us though. I can't right now. <laughs> okay, tell us all it's, right it's cringy, dude. I've shown a few people. It's fucking cringy. But um, yeah, so... I actually didn't like my last name before. I was like, oh, like, Collar's kind of a weird name. Like, because in school, the teachers were like, Collar, Collar. I'm like, fuck, they can't even say my name. And then people like think this is a Collar, right? They think it's spelled C O L L A R. But I like it now. But at the time, you know, when I called it Collar Clothing, um, I was like, okay, I guess I have to be the face of it too because, and it just worked out because at the time, who I was as a person, I just wanted to party and have fun. And just like, I was a young kid, I just want just, Make money, have fun. And I remember growing up, like, I watched The Wolf of Washington. I'm like, oh, shit, this is sick. And, <clears throat> like, where I am now is much different. But I still like to have fun. But, like, at the time, though, um, I didn't realize that I was building, like, a whole lifestyle behind what I was doing. And I was like, okay, just, let's just film this all. And I was filming myself going to China for the first time, to Vegas, doing the parties, doing the trade shows. And, um, yeah, it just kind of worked out that I was filming myself with the brand and people liked the brand because of how I was dressing. I love so this it, story. Yeah. So in the, it's a good, 
30 minute story. So in the <laughs> end, you weren't, you really weren't a shit actor then because you're, you were the one that was portraying the brand and portraying yourself. So in, in essence, your yeah, sister yeah. said you're shit actor jokes on her. You're actually <laughs> a decent actor. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I tell my sister that. Yeah. But I don't, I guess like, um, yeah, cause you know, at the time, like when I was hosting and throwing these parties, I legit was just be myself and like it was easy for me because i just like want to have fun yeah. you know so yeah, I feel it. and i just came naturally so uh, by that time like I, I try everything i do i try to be very authentic and real about it so even though i was hosting the parties i think i'm a pretty nice guy like people that know me so like if people certain people can't get in it would bother me because i want everyone to have fun so like i would actually stop myself from drinking just to make sure certain people would get in to the to the to the parties so because I was super nice to everyone and I helped everyone and like I started meeting like club owners and they started to want to work with me. Um, I think I've done a party at every club in Toronto already. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like when I was starting out, like it was almost every club I've done a party in and I realized- You got fired after, right after. They won party. Yeah. Every, every, yeah you got to switch it up. I got kicked out of my own parties. There's <laughs> definitely a joke to be made here about Crown Entertainment, but I'm not going to uh, do it. <laughs> So we, here, we, yeah, me, me and one of the guys me, in the back used the, to throw the parties. Back, yeah. back corner here, known as Crown Entertainment, they used to be the hottest clubs, uh, hottest parties throw, in the city crazy, until uh, what club? Uh, until Avicii Bill and I'm rest yeah. in peace. Avicii. <laughs> no way did, for our refund. We literally did every every freaking club like mm. Cobra Toronto. This is London Sky Bar. Roosevelt right, right. Room. You remember Roosevelt Room? I do. Yeah, Roosevelt. I used to room. love that place. Roosevelt Room was fun. Yeah. Um, EFS Lost and Found. Man, EFS has been all uh, here for a while. Yeah, Arriva, yeah. Strange Love, Atelier, Cheval. Wow. You yeah. guys are all promoters? No, I just mean a little guy in the back. <laughs> These guys just came with us. Nice. I, used to, I used to be their DJ. Yeah, I used you, to be yeah. back in the S day. Since yeah, I, yeah. Opened for all the big, I opened for all the big shows. Yeah. yeah. Five, five. We got five. So we got near the pot. I did want to push it for like another 10 if you want yeah 10 15 okay, okay. beautiful i, I want to ask when did you know you had oh, something no. she's like no she's like no we can't because <laughs> we have the we'll, reservation we'll, 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 we'll get it we'll get it um we can always we'll do we'll do part two mike okay. shut up <laughs> i'm sure five ten minutes will be okay mike's just mad because his podcast episode sucked <laughs> it's okay <laughs> we Okay, hey, get back on track here. So Pipe down back you know, the there. The next time I'm here, we'll drink. I we'll think we'll be fun. <laughs> it's gonna, and I'll tell you the rated R three hours. <laughs> <laughs> we get the Darren Vegas. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. If we're gonna drink. We need three hours blocked yeah, yeah. off because that's not, the, those stories will this, not end. They're yeah, gonna yeah. go into different directions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with our ADD. <laughs> yeah, for the sake of time, I did want to ask: When did you know you had something with collar? Obviously, it's like it's everybody in Toronto knows it now. It's not just yeah. Toronto; it's you know internationally known. When did you know you had something? Dude, it's funny because when I was doing it, I didn't really stop to think about it because i was just doing it and it became normal and as i was like leveling up in the brand i just kept thinking it was normal which is bad because you should always stop to enjoy it because if you work too much and then you get to where you want and there's never get to where you want because you think you're there and you want more so like my main thing now is i'm super i always stop to like think about where i'm at and yeah, be I grateful for it. it yeah but back to your question i feel like for that like um, I kind of started feeling like I was getting somewhere when I was building a, a list of stores I was in and I counted and it was 300 retailers. And then I was in every store in the U S Canada. So Simon's Saks, uh, TNT, Yorkville, and then in Japan and in other stores. Wow. And I, I didn't focus on online much. And then before COVID happened, I actually exited right away because I knew something was going to happen like six months before because stores were just slow with paying and they were just hearing stuff about China. So I was paranoid because my stuff's made in China, Portugal, and Turkey. So I kind of pulled back a little bit and I went full 100% on online and Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Um, but I think when I felt like I started getting it somewhere was when I started getting um, celebrities hitting me up. Like uh, I got invited to like... Um, what was it? Young Thug's concert to put clothes on him, gonna like stuff like that. That's when I start realizing, oh, like, okay, people actually like this stuff. Shit, I got something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's, and I felt pretty happy about that because I'm like, to me, like, I just thought I was like this kid in Toronto. I didn't think much of it, right? So looking back to when you were, you know, making Snicker bars per hour. Yeah, and yeah. Or Cinnabons, gas, yeah. Cinnabons. Or Cinnabons an hour. That right? college like, subway station. That makes yeah. a difference. Then you got gun aware in your stuff, right? Yeah, it's pretty, yeah. It's a feel-good moment. Yeah, yeah. So that that was probably when I felt like, okay. But, you know, when I was starting the brand, my main thing was, again, when I came from Slovakia to Toronto, 
Uh, I was very poor, like I said. And so my main thing was I wanted to make sure that my mom didn't have to work anymore. Like, and like, I, I, I can make it to a point where, uh, she didn't have to stress. So I had like a really strong why I was doing it. And then on top of that, I was having fun with it. So, yeah. That's awesome, awesome, man. I have one more question. Do you, uh, are you still manifesting every day today or are you done with that shit? <laughs> you're like, you know what? Fuck that. Gun has got my stuff on. I ain't got to manifest no more. Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> So it, it's interesting because I actually stopped. I stopped it for like during COVID and stuff. I stopped it. I didn't tell you. This is another story, but like. When Hit COVID, us. Let's go. We, we got five minutes. Dinner, we got five minutes when, out. when COVID <laughs> happened, I built a, another brand on the side, a mass brand. And we sold it to City of Toronto, uh, the governments. We sold it to Sobeys. We sold it to, uh, who else did we sell it to? Like all these big companies. And after that happened, I sort of, all these weird shit started happening in my life. Like I started like doing a 180 of like, like I started experiencing all these weird stuff, like in terms of like, uh, um, it, I started getting injured a lot for no reason. And I'm like pretty athletic. I just play a lot of sports and like I went to California and I sprained my left ankle the first day I got there. And then I was like, okay, fuck it. Like I always twisted it. Two weeks later, I was like feeling better. I was going, I always go zero to hundred. Everything I did when I work out and play sports, I was just competitive. Yep. Figured that right leg yeah. sprained <laughs> it again. My right, I, I twisted my right leg two weeks later and then I, uh, like injured my lower back somehow. Then I came back to Toronto and I was doing a hundred kilometer bike rides every morning, fasted, and I was doing 10 kilometer runs for no reason. I was not training for Olympics. <laughs> I didn't think, I don't know why I was doing it. it was That's crazy. a crazy, like but, I, but I I'll run, tell you but what happened. hundred kilometer bike rides is like, yeah, it just didn't for make shit. Yeah. Four hour bike ride. Yeah, I was, I was just, I just wanted to see how far I could push myself. And then uh, one day my hand went numb. Like both so one day you figured out how far you can push yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You figured <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. It was head. bad, but I I got a, a, a like a herniation in my my disc through them, and it was from from really bad posture uh, working on the computer and putting sandbags. Again, I was spazzy, zero to hundred. I didn't have posture. Sand, I was, sandbags. Like I would work out with sandbags and do squats, but I'd throw them on my neck and some back. What the hell? And so, so no, yeah, that. it's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> But I didn't want to hear this. Guys, training for the Navy SEALs yeah, while yeah. running a clothing yeah. brand. And like, dude, in my <laughs> in my twenties, I had a concussion where I lost my memory for six months. That's another story, though. <laughs> that we'll but, save that one for yeah, part two. We don't have we enough time. Let's see. Yeah, we got six why, hours. Why I'm going telling here. you this it's is a three part series. <laughs> yeah, I stopped manifesting, but I I had to really, um, dude. I was like before COVID, I was drinking, blacking out smoking cigarettes like i was just living like how a rock star would live right? i just wanted to be like a rock star and i i got a wake-up call and i i was like i literally injured myself to a point where i was in my bed and i couldn't move my body i was paralyzed dude like i, I couldn't text i couldn't do anything because the nerves were so bad damaged from my disc and the doctor said you're never gonna be better you're gonna be like this for the rest of your life and then i started visualizing myself getting better and if you know, if you look up like herniated discs, it's yeah. a pretty it's serious. Bad. Yeah, it's very fucked bad. up. Like people get injured for years without being he being healed. So to this day, like I'm probably like 70% better, but I'm still going through it. But for like, for one year, I was like in my, for like three months, I was in my bed. I couldn't even text and um, I couldn't walk for more than 10 minutes. I'd have to like lay down right away. But I started manifesting and like putting vis more meaningful like things i took things for granted like just having dinner or having a conversation on a couch with you guys like this yeah. i couldn't do that before so i started turn it, the way i see life now is way different because before all i did was chase money and just parties and when i had this injury i realized i took it all for granted and so i'm at a stage right now where i'm manifesting again but i'm manifesting more meaningful things right so and i still like to party i'm not gonna lie like i'll probably host a party <laughs> and invite you guys and just have there. one good night right but <laughs> I'll, my main thing is like, I really want to like, I have been manifesting. So if I get a hundred percent better, I'll let you know if it works, the manifestation, but I'm doing acupuncture and other shit too. Dude, but. at this point, honestly, <laughs> I, I am, I have no doubts. You're going to be back to like a hundred percent. Like yeah. in 200 I'll be ordering Popeye's yourself. McDonald's and yeah, that's, right. happens, Dude, that's crazy. We were from like 100 going to bike rides to drinking and smoking to lifting sandbags to like, Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. It's it a fucking it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. We we are on obviously time crunch. 
Uh, I'm not even gonna ask final questions just because we're gonna we're gonna do this again. We'll set this up for a couple months okay, now. Yeah. Like I know. <laughs> Whereas I'm assuming there's a spring line well, coming out. Yeah, soon. there is. Yeah, I'm so telling you, I have never listened to an episode. I don't listen to any of our episodes really. I'm gonna have to listen to this one, to take notes on things that I missed, so we can talk about it next time. Because yeah. we would like oh, start. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like we went in like. A million yeah. directions. This, yeah. this is actually it I've done amazing. a few, and I'm not gonna lie. This has been the most fun one I had. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh it's, yeah, it's very natural. You hear we've that, Mike? That. Take we, notes, we've brother. Heard that. We've heard that. Learn to learn yeah. to sit on a yeah, podcast. That's, that, well, that's the fun thing. So, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just an interview. It's like question answer, question answer. The idea is like yeah. it's a conversation with pals. Yeah, now yeah. we are pals, right? We're pals now, bro. Um, <laughs> quickly, just because obviously I'm gonna let you plug it. You got a new collection, I'm assuming April, May, spring. Yeah. So, um, you know, right now we actually this year we're changing things up. Okay. We actually have a new collection every week. Ooh. Yeah, so every week we're dropping new stuff. Danielle, you should have told us that so I didn't look like an idiot. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Thanks. But every week I'm going to do videos to explain fits and explain products. So, because I'm trying to focus more on the online business. So, a lot of people, not everyone knows how to put together an outfit or like a sweater. So, my main thing is I want to make sure that. I explain everything I drop on a weekly basis. I don't give them too much because it gets complicated. You get like confused because there's so many things. I'm going to drop really high quality products once a week. So like this uh, Friday will be flannels. Next week will be more jeans. I'm going to switch it up. But um, and I'm going to have a new return program where if you don't know your size, you can buy two items. So you can buy a medium and a large. Let's say you're buying it online. You don't know what size you are. You can buy medium and large. And I'll return the whatever size didn't fit you for free. So it's like shopping in person, but without needing to go. That's to actually store. so sick because I'm in the literally the middle between medium and large on like 90% of Oh, there things. you go. So if you shop at college. It all depends yeah. if it's like a, fit, a fitted thing. I'm a large. If it's a regular size, I'm a medium. Yeah, that's Oh, terrible. that's sick. Yeah. So that's yeah. Awesome, so man. yeah. Very so cool. the website's uh, Collar Clothing, K-O-L-L-A-R. I love that. C-L-O-8. T L O T H I N G dot com. I'm not drunk. <laughs> but, Instagram. Uh, but, oh, Instagram. You can find me personally, uh, David Caller, D A V I D K O L L A R. And the brand is Caller Clothing on Instagram. And uh, if you YouTube Caller Clothing, you can see a lot of the footage I was talking about. Oh, today. we're definitely YouTube in that. Yeah. Um, and what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And every week we drop something new. And, uh, you know, we have a really nice collection coming up for spring. Uh, I'm gonna. My goal is to film it and shoot it. A lot of the collections we have little short films and movies. So this one might be shot in Italy. Ooh. And the vibe is very. It's a lot of like crop pants, knitted resort shirts. So it's kind of classy with the rock star vibe to it. So it should be cool. And then we have loafers coming out. That's my. That's but, my right up my alley. Yeah, yeah. So I we got some cool stuff. Too too many yeah. loafers this point. I'm like, I'll grab. Them. You'll like it. It's 100%. like the stressed leather loafers. I have cool. like some crazy stuff coming out. Yeah. So it's pretty good, pretty man. Dope, good. Man. Well, we'll make sure we get you back on uh, again because this was honestly a blast. Yeah, was a yeah blast. man, that's fun. Yeah, it's a crazy like, one. Yeah, so, this was fun, dude. Yeah, if yeah. you made it to the end, we appreciate you. Give David a follow, Collar Clothing. Georgie's back on Instagram for the time being. Who knows if he deletes it? Abu Salas, hit me up. So hit him up. Secretive. Other than that, we appreciate you. Thank you. Stay tuned for the part two in a couple months, yeah, maybe yeah, a yeah. couple weeks. Who knows at this point? Yeah. Uh, but that's it. Signing off, pals. Cheers. You like to drink and to smoke and to take away the pain. And I don't remember all of my mistakes in every I got alone. No one thing. You're not alright. I'm not alright